Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to new episode of Lifestyle with Dr. Moby. This is Dr. Moby. Here today we have excellent guests discussing about some of important mental health issues. But before we go into that, I just want to give a few pointers here. It's very important to realize that how stress, any situation, stressful situation can change our eating habits and especially what it can influence our diet or so. So there is the excellent research on carb craving and stress. It is because of the stressful situation we actually crave for more carbs and we want to eat things which really give us a lot of energy. And the reason is because the brain metabolism is increased by 12% and then some of these food which we call comfort foods carbs actually cause our change to changes the neurotransmitters such as serotonin and that gives us comfort feeling that you want to keep eating so let's discuss with our guest implications of diet as well as nutrition as well as stress management so i welcome our guest dr Khusru today. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Khusru Arastu. I'm a psychiatrist. Uh, so uh, I've been in the field for uh, several years now and uh, almost uh, 25 plus years. Mm -hmm. So um, um, there are a lot of coping skills we use for stress, uh, but one of the negative coping skills could be overeating and stress eating. So stress eating sometimes, you know, is very harmful. And so this is a good time to reflect and change what we eat and uh, eat healthy, stay healthy. And um, so uh, we'll deal with this uh, in more detail as we go along. Uh, sure. yeah. Thank you for for a great introduction. Also, I would like to as a for everybody for audience, I'd like to first understand the, basically implications of stress and stressful situation and mood disorders in general. So if I have some of these disorders, what implication it would have for the family members and myself? And if you can help us understand uh, for a normal person to understand how it can really impact somebody's lifestyle, um, any stressful situation. So uh, this uh, global pandemic is a very unique thing. Most of us have never experienced anything like this in our lifestyle, lifetimes. So, and a lot of people are going to react differently to the whole stress situation. And not just mental health patients, uh, any normal people will go through several uh, psychological impacts. So I tried to put them in a framework of mm. uh, Kubler-Ross's uh, stages of grief, you know. Mm. So, so like uh, they are denial, um, bargaining, and uh, depression, anxiety, and acceptance phases. So they may not necessarily go in this order, mm -hmm. but everybody may have a different way they deal with this stress. So I kind of put that in uh, that kind of a framework. Okay. Yeah. And um, doctor has an excellent article actually, and we'll share with the audience as we go along some of those highlights and actually you can see it um, or as slide shows with, with our program. So as he mentioned, there's excellent model to understand any stressful situation and that could be with those, they don't have to go in order, they can be any part of. So somebody could be literally in denial or, or phase and they, they said, no, this cannot happen. For example, if somebody has a tragedy, they will say, no, this cannot happen. So there's total denial of uh, reality. It can happen. So it's very important to understand the human behavior, how we deal with any stressful situation. And then I will ask him, what do you think uh, in terms of family, what uh, our loved ones, how do they experience what changes in our behavior should point out to them that no, this is something can really impact our life. 
So uh, we are all going to be um, locked in and close quarters, uh, mm-hmm. sometimes getting on each other's nerves. Yeah. But family members can look out for each other. They mm-hmm. look, uh, they can look for some warning signs, you know. Okay. Somebody getting very moody or cranky or just mm-hmm. uh, uh, getting... Uh, mm-hmm. uh, internalizing stuff and getting more depressed Mm -hmm. so and if particularly if they have a mental health issue to Mm -hmm. begin with Mm -hmm. and uh, the family is starting to see some warning signs Mm -hmm. uh, then they may try to get them to help could be redirection could be maybe counseling or even sometimes medication maybe somebody may need medication new medication or somebody may need adjustments but most of the things can be handled with good skills and keeping a good uh, lifestyle and environment uh, to go along with this, you know. Okay. So, and uh, some people unravel in these kind of things, you know, they may have anxiety attacks, they may have psychotic breakthroughs, you know, some may just get a little paranoid. So families could be um, looking out for these kind of symptoms, particularly for the high risk uh, individuals. You know? Okay, great. So some of the symptoms for audience, uh, just pay attention to that your mood could be low, that you know you are less engaged. The other thing is, or some people become too hyper, and we'll talk a little bit of those. But some are more withdrawn. They would be sitting in the uh, in the same place for hours and not talk or do anything. And those are not uh, like other things which will be your appetite. It can be uh, you could be overeating. So certain people cope with that by overeating and some actually lose appetite. So th- there are, everybody is different. We all kind of exhibit and actually do things based on our genetic response to any disease and treatment. So some, uh, not everyone will have all the manifestation of same disease. So some could be basically, have, uh, could be sleeping a lot, many, many hours, and they don't want to wake up in the morning. They would change their routine and they will sleep for extra hours or, and they don't want to get out of the bed or some could really lose all the sleep and not go to bed. So we, it's very important to pay attention to your norm and if your family thinks that you have changed, then make sure it's a time to relook and see if we can do certain things in our life to help us. So let's try to understand one by one some of the concepts of uh, stress management and uh, see what things uh, doctor would you recommend somebody like you said family support is important try to talk to your family members Mm -hmm. maybe check on them talk to them get engaged in conversations Mm -hmm. right and what about um, paying attention to uh, each other in terms of your sleep and making sure you're getting good hours of sleep I think encouraging each other to uh, keep a good, healthy lifestyle, you know, so okay. so maybe uh, what we can do is go over the uh, sure. symptoms or like the impacts of psychological impacts, sure. then how we deal with it. So that, sure. we can. So, so you can uh, emphasize some of those. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, can I go over the yeah, model? Sure, yeah, sure. So I've used the uh, Kubler-Ross's model of grief uh, as a uh, Uh, paradigm to put all the mental health issues in perspective. You know, the first part is uh, basically um, denial. You know, you hear of a shocking news or a shocking thing that like the global pandemic is going on right now. So uh, most people, a lot of some people may go into a denial, you know, okay, this is a a very painful reality. You don't want to really accept it, you know. So, and then uh, sometimes it's too distant, you know, it's happening in China, it's happening in Europe, or it's not happening in Loudoun County, you know, so uh, we are safe. Sometimes, and that can make you Mm -hmm. uh, take a very cavalier attitude, put yourself at risk. Mm -hmm. And another uh, defense mechanism, uh, which could be part of the denial, Denial is, you know, displacing the blame, you know, okay, you're blaming to a higher authority or your, you know, government or somebody else, you know, mm-hmm. to not to take responsibility, sort of, you know. 
and then there could be some uh, people uh, get paranoid, not just psychotic people. They, uh, they love to believe in uh, uh, conspiracy theories and not just believe and they propagate it, you know. So it's, uh, again, it's a, a, a psychological defense mechanism which may not be very healthy, but it displaces the issue. It takes it away from your personal uh, psyche, kind of. So that could be one part of the psychological thing. The second part would be maybe like anger, you know, why me, why now, I'm going to lose my job, I was mm. planning to buy a new house, you know, everything has to be mm. postponed. So, and this anger can be misplaced and displaced to certain groups of people, okay, for the, particularly the Chinese people, the virus came from China and so our healthcare workers, uh, even the sick people could be a target of your anger. Mm. And sometimes uh, just the government officials, and some people displace their anger uh, towards their loved ones. You know, you're in close quarters of a family um, who may have uh, kids in college, they have all home now, and you are getting on each other's nerves again, you know, so you can displace anger to uh, each other, you know. So that's something uh, we have to keep uh, perspective on, keep the insight on, and then uh, check. So, so that's a very important point is that your loved ones actually can f feel the really bu uh, burnt with all these your stress you're going through because unfortunately they will be the first one to get these effects of that stressful situation. So maybe we should uh, pay more attention to our loved ones first and close by make sure you understand, you talk to them and say, if they feel that your behavior is changed, then we really need to pay attention to our self-analysis and trying to come up with some certain measures to help ourselves. Let's talk a little bit more about um, your um, program. So uh, the next uh, couple of steps in the stages uh, mm -hmm. uh, from the Kubler-Ross's model is the bargaining. Mm -hmm. Bargaining is basically you try to procrastinate stuff. You know, we'll do it later. It's not going to be that bad. Mm -hmm. So again, trying to keep the painful reality away, you know. So, and uh, sometimes people are willing to do anything, you know, like this hoarding uh, issue, the toilet paper crisis, you know. Yeah. It's very strange and not many, um, many things are going off the shelves, you know, but toilet paper particularly is gone. So human behavior is sometimes very unpredictable. So in this part of bargaining, you kind of tend to do things which may not be very rational. Mm -hmm. And there, there are some people hoarding guns and ammunition. So it was interesting, a couple of my patients, I was asking, why are you doing this? So one was pretty paranoid about it. He was saying, okay, I'm, I want to protect myself and my family. There could be anarchy, that could be the government could take over. And the other guy was saying, well, you know, I can live off the land for the next six months. I'm going to hunt squirrels and deer and oh. feed myself, you know. So that was pretty interesting, you know, so two different perspectives, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and everybody wants to be better safe than sorry kind of thing, you know, so just uh, if everyone's buying something, okay, I want to get that too, you know, and then keep, make sure uh, we don't run out of that, you know. So, and even the stock market crash has a big psychological impact to it, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I was talking to one of my economist friends, you know, mm -hmm. who works for the IMF. He was saying, you know, a couple of months of lost revenues from this big market could be up to like five to 10%. But this 30-40% decline is pretty much psychological, the panic, you know, of course, uh, it's, uh, uh, we can understand that, you know. Okay. So, and uh, the next step is the anxiety, if you have any questions about this part. You know, sure, so. sure. So uh, it's very important to understand uh, about uh, some of the behavior. So I, I always, I see also a lot of patients which we, they have the sleep disorders and they come to me and they say, they are getting uh, very anxious and they have a lot of stress and that's impacting their sleep. So I always tell them uh, brain is uh, the smartest organ. Just remember that there are different parts in the brain. There is reward center, there is executive function, memory, and we those all parts work beautifully if you let them work in combination. So there's a sequence of events has to happen and they uh, work like computer perfectly all parts are working, but certain focus areas are more. So those are how the brain functions the best. 
Unfortunately, if you have a panic situation or if we have a stressful situation, certain hormones such as adrenaline will put us in fear or flight mode and that will cause all the neurons or all parts of the brain to fire and though that's an emergency response but unfortunately you lose the sense of logic memory cognition with that because your body is prepared to fight the worst not think a lot so panic and anxiety is not very very good for the brain because in terms of all the functions creativity and executive functions all are gone because the body goes into this mode it's going to fight so uh, let's uh, discuss a little bit about effects of anxiety on on uh, on human behavior as well as uh, how to deal with it. So uh, any uh, major uh, event like this, you know, particularly this pandemic, which is very unprecedented and uh, new things are going on every day, that's going to create a lot of anxiety. And it's a generalized anxiety, fear of the unknown, you know, what's going to happen, what, how's, how, how's my family going to be in the next week or next month or next few months, you know. So uh, particularly susceptible people, you mm -hmm. know, they will be more uh, at risk uh, for this increased in generalized anxiety for the, basically the fear of the unknown. And uh, the disease itself, you know, you're seeing so much uh, information about the disease that it's, people are very anxious and worried about what's going to happen if I get sick. So, and then some high-risk people with panic attacks, their panic attacks can increase, particularly when they are in contact uh, with more uh, like crowded places or closed in spaces, you know. So that's going to happen. People with obsessive compulsive disorder, their cleaning rituals can go up because of the anxiety, the morbid fear of germs, uh, that's going to uh, limit them, you know. And uh, that's something uh, that uh, they need to be aware about and their family and therapists should be uh, kind of concerned about if that's going to make them, you know, worse. And uh, some uh, conditions like schizophrenia and all can get worse. With anxiety drives the psychosis sometimes and uh, the mass hysteria uh, causes uh, a heightened level of anxiety in ev pretty much every group of people. So particularly the mental health uh, um, uh, patients and the population, they need to be a little bit more careful and uh, worried about. So the, the social distancing and the unpredictability, like schools are closed indefinitely. They're not going to do, uh, know when uh, they're going to open. Uh, so many other things, the unpredictability. Humans are very uh, organized people. We know, want to know what's going to happen next. The unpredictability is, and uncertainty is going to cause a lot of anxiety. You know? So, and uh, then the flip side of anxiety is depression. You know, people mm -hmm. go into depression just uh, uh, dealing with these things over time. And sometimes anxiety and depressions could be two sides of the same coin. You know, so. Uh, there's so much uh, loss of time and wages and that's going to factor in uh, from just plain moodiness to mm. you know, full-flown depression could be part of this you know okay. and just being closed in sometimes caused uh, cause a depression you know winter blues you know cabin fever these are known terms but luckily we are moving into spring so that may not be a very uh, big issue at this time but you know definitely being closed in uh, can cause problems People are losing their vacations, their uh, high school graduations and proms and so many things which a lot of people, young people particularly, look forward to. That's going to be very depressing when, um, uh, when you lose all these uh, opportunities, sort of, you know. Okay. So, um, and that's very, very interesting to uh, learn that we all actually have behavior patterns and brain really expects same routine and so if we don't get it we get very anxious about it and it can really impact in terms of our lifestyle and have complications um, whether it's behavior or whether it is other lifestyle changes so let's talk a little bit about how do you suggest managing some of these stressful situations um, for um, public. 
So I think uh, one of the big things is uh, the social media and the regular media has uh, pretty much gone on steroids, you know. So uh, we need to be careful what we are getting in. Uh, staying informed is very important, but mm. also not getting overloaded with information, which can cause all these anxieties and depression, internalization to be more, you know. So uh, the media tries to sensationalize. The social media is just Mm -hmm. full of remedies and false uh, narratives and everything. So uh, we need to uh, keep a check on that. So in general, uh, I've tried to come up with a, another paradigm to how to cope with this and staying afloat in this type of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And this is based on Abraham Maslow's uh, uh, pyramid, the hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. So I made a few needs which kind of go over like uh, physiological needs, physical needs, uh, social needs, psychological needs, intellectual needs, spiritual needs, which all kind of keep us together, you know, keep our integrity together, you know, psychological and physical. So that's uh, one of the paradigms I thought about to uh, use and for not for mental health mm -hmm. patients or general uh, mentally ill patients, uh, just for anybody. You know. Yeah, okay. dealing with this crisis. Okay, so let's uh, talk a little bit about how to manage it. Like he said, um, he has come up with the model to kind of explain and help a lot of patients. So we'll give a few tips on that and we will then come up to the few uh, final tips and thoughts. So let's come up with the, some of the highlights from your model, uh, Doctor. Do you think uh, for your pyramid, um, you can highlight some of the important things? So uh, starting uh, with at the lowest level, uh, the physiological needs, you know. So good nutrition, uh, eating healthy, uh, like fresh vegetables, vitamins, you know, fresh fruits, you know, mm -hmm. that would be very helpful, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a good time to try good recipes. We have time with the families together, good healthy recipes rather mm -hmm. than, you know, eat uh, unhealthy uh, food, you know, stockpile on those kind of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So... so yeah, and that's very good about diet. So um, I get a lot of questions about that. So keep watching our show. It's very important that you pay attention to eating healthier. So and make sure you follow this uh, guideline. It's a lifestyle change. So don't dishearten if you somehow lose the track, come back to it. So it's very important. Like doctor mentioned about eating healthy, prepare your meals, there was actually a study if you do even dishwashing and that actually relaxes you. Yeah. So it is a good relaxation technique and if you cook the meal that really helps actually in my opinion that um, make a dish with your loved ones and or for them or with them and that actually helps uh, to keep relaxed. Um, so dishwashing and cooking is, yeah. is a good habit actually. Actually, I'm the dishwasher in the family. I love oh, yeah. it. It relaxes me. Oh, yeah. so, so it relaxes. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, and also staying hydrated is a good thing, you know, okay. uh, not just uh, sodas or something which could be unhealthy, just mm -hmm. uh, staying good hydration. And then sleep is one of the most important pillars, you know, sleeping well. Uh, makes everything you know you restock your neurochemicals when you sleep that's really the main reason you know you give your body can go on like the heart can beat 24 7 you know right from 20 weeks of gestation you know but the brain has to stop to restock serotonin and dopamine and all these things and so you need to get a good night's sleep for mood as well as immunity and a physical everything you know so, and avoiding caffeine uh, is a good thing, you know, maybe I would say at least eight hours before bedtime. Yeah. A lot of our culture, we drink tea right after dinner. Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea, but uh, keeping it away from bedtime is good. You know, you may fall asleep, but I, you, I tell my patients and my friends and family, like caffeine in your system is like putting your car on park, but the ignition is on. So the engine's running, you really don't uh, uh, give your brain a good rest, you know. So uh, just uh, something to think about in caffeine. And getting out every day, getting some fresh air is a good idea. And sunlight, you know, you need to generate vitamin D naturally. It's better mm -hmm. to get some sunlight and vitamin D rather than take a pill, you know. So 20 minutes outside, sit on the deck, take a walk, mm -hmm. do some yard work if the weather is nice, you know. So. Yeah. 
and that's important so again uh, sleep is very important our body rejuvenates physically as neurochemically for the brain to work uh, so a lot of memory consolidation emotions all actually happen during sleep and so if you're not sleeping enough hours that not uh, great for your body it will really wear it down lot of incidents of mood disorders actually coexist with a uh, quality of sleep as well as quantity so it's very important i always tell patient to sleep adequate hours second thing is make sure if you have any diagnosis of sleep apnea get that treated because that mm-hmm. will impair the quality of sleep and also pay attention to your routine so wake up on time uh, do not change uh, too much on weekend and weekday so i call always patients that's called social jet lagging try to avoid that do not change too much on weekend then monday it's very difficult the uh, other thing is uh, environment has such a positive role in human behavior we don't realize but there's a clock in the brain which actually works 24 hours or so and it is regulated each cell and each part is regulated and it synchronizes very well but if you keep changing but it needs synchronization every day to environment which means your brain should know that this is day and this is night but it can only know if you go out so uh, also it's very important the blue sky because the blue light programs your brain so and it has this positive energy which your brain needs to fight uh, some of the mood disorders which we experienced like doctor said it's very important you go out take a walk and also sleep better caffeine problem is the half life is about 3 to 4 hours but it does not get out of your system a lot of times 7 8 hours because we all metabolize very differently and sometimes it's very very toxic for somebody so you don't want to make a bit take too much caffeine and feel that oh they, we cannot sleep so one of the reason because you taking coffee or tea too close to bedtime yeah. so i think uh, and also pay attention to vitamin d get your levels checked take multivitamins check your blood levels and take if you need it and then we'll have some of the highlights from your other thoughts and tips so and then also the physical needs you know mm-hmm. uh, being safe and you know um and trying to dress appropriately to the weather keeps your you know immunity warm and you don't want to get a cough or a cold and then that could um, uh, mimic some of the symptoms and then uh, frighten everyone so and then keep the supplies plan ahead stay abreast you know of uh, what's going on you know and then also get some exercise done so that's really going to be important you know we don't want to get sedentary while we are locked in so the social distan- the social needs in this case um is social distancing you know rather than meeting people so but social distancing uh, you need to still stay connected use the media social media uh, call your friends and family rather than worry about them talk to them you know well, that's the best way to uh and catching up on old friends old times that's all going to be a positive impact on your uh, social needs you know and then of course ignore social media try to keep a limit on what you want to go and get from there you know so then the next part would be the community needs i think we should uh, humans are very communal uh, community based people so we get feel rewarded and we need to help each other out but doing this there are many ways to help people out you know so you can just do it by money by time by volunteering but i want to use this paradigm of self you of virtueness uh, uh, virtue of selfishness sorry so you have to keep yourself safe first you know if you can take care of yourself you can take care of friends family around you, you know so uh, i think that's uh, the virtue of selfishness i got from ayn rand from my uh, college days but uh, i think it's very important you have to have spheres of selfishness to be able to uh, go to the other spheres and be able to be uh, productive and helpful also i would like to ask you a few other tips if you want to share with us 
Okay, so I think another uh, part of the hierarchy of needs could be the uh, environment, you know, mm -hmm. keeping a good environment, keeping it bright, fresh air, you know, even decorate with flowers, you know, it uh, uplifts your mood. And then play with your family, spend uh, family time watching TV, doing uh, activities together could help. And um, on a meditation level, a lot of people benefit from meditation like yoga and the relaxation techniques, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the spiritual aspect is very important too. Whatever your faith, whatever your belief system, mm -hmm. uh, some uh, reflection and that empowers you, you know. For most people it really helps, you know. Mm -hmm. It uh, gives you hope, gives you uh, empowerment, you know. So keep your surroundings bright and uh, nice. Uh, avoid clutter and keep it clean so the visual chaos uh, helps you stay positive you know so and positivity and positive emotions really help boost your immunity so. but th thank you once again and we uh, thank you our guests for wonderful tips so just my final thought just make sure pay attention to um, a stress and that plays important role in our uh, diet also and lifestyle because Increased level of stress cause cortisol secretion and cause problem with our eating habits and can cause diabetes and also lower our immune system. So pay attention, keep healthy, keep watching our show, give us feedback. We love to hear from you, Twitter, email or website, whatever you like, but keep sending us your questions and we'll be happy to answer next program. Thank you once again, Dr. Fukar. Thank you very much.